All right, welcome to Mastering eChalk Lesson Planner on Google Hangout. Uh, we have some participants from Emerson. They can wave hello. And then we have our participants here live at Pershing. So we'll get started. Um, and then if there's any questions, just ask them in the Today's Meet, which is in the little group chat area. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And then we're going to minimize the Google+. Plus. All right, so um, as always, if you log into eChalk and you go to My Groups, so everybody get a chance, log into eChalk and go to My Groups, and you all have a group called eChalk Professional Development. So click on your eChalk Professional Development group. All right. Once you have your eChalk professional development group open, you'll see that today's event is Mastering eChalk Lesson Planner. So click on that. Um, and this is just a little overview of what we're going to do today, just to sort of remind everybody and if we forget and to kind of keep us on track. So um, I know that um, right now Emerson does not use eChalk Lesson Planner. Is that correct, Emerson? Uh, yeah, I believe they do not. So, um, those of you here, how, how, where are we at with Lesson Planner? Using it all the time. Mm -hmm. Using it often? Okay, so we have a, a lot of different levels and hopefully we'll be able to help everybody. Alright, so the first thing is we're just going to go over the basics of um, lesson planning with Lesson Planner. This document right here, eChalk Lesson Planner Basics, will open up um, and it just has the step-by-step -step directions for how to plan a lesson in eChalk. You can download this, um, save it on your computer if you want. It's also in the resources area of the eChalk professional development group. So just for those of you who are just joining us, if you go to my groups and you click on eChalk professional development, um, back here you'll see there's the lesson planner and in those resources you'll find um, that document. So that steps you through the process if you forget, so that's a great one to have at the start of the year um, if you forgot or you click things incorrectly. A lot of Lesson Planner just takes kind of just using it to get used to it, to know the ins and outs of it. Um, but definitely if you have questions, let me know. Alright, so the first place to go when we plan lessons is to My Lessons. And in the My Lesson area, you have a calendar of your classes as well as the day of the week. Um, if you have different classes here than you have in your My Classes area, I can show you how to fix that today. We'll do that a little bit later. There's a way that you can customize it so you can have a box for every class you teach or you can have two boxes for your math class because you have two math groups or you can have one box to plan in that posts to two different classes. You can completely customize how everything works um, and I'll show you how to do that later. Um, and the reason why it, it may be confusing is because if you originally set up your classes and then set up Lesson Planner, your classes and your Lesson Planner boxes matched. You had one box for every class. But if you've since added classes or taken classes out, the Lesson Planner area doesn't update and the reason is because although it would be nice if it did it also doesn't make it it makes it so you can't customize it so you may have a class that you don't plan lessons for because of whatever type of class it is what you might not want a box in there taking up that space or like I had mentioned earlier if you have a class where you have multiple groups and you're always planning different lessons for the different levels you can have a different box for each of those levels. So we'll, I'll show you how to do that later on. But for now, let's pick one class to plan a lesson in. And so it doesn't have to be a real lesson. It can be a real lesson. It's up to you how um, specific that you, you want to get. I'm going to start with math, and I'm going to say add a lesson. You can also click the add a lesson button up here, and that's just going to then ask you the class that you want to add it to. So I'm just going to click here, add a lesson. All right, the first thing you need to do is give your lesson a name. Think about this long term if you plan on using this lesson again or if somebody else will use this lesson. Don't just call it Math on Tuesday or Math on Monday because it's not going to give you any information. If you have a specific unit that goes along with the text or, or something along those lines, you might want to plan it um, 
in that in that way. So I'm going to call my area and perimeter um, one because I'm going to do area and perimeter for a whole week, and I want to know the different days. Unit. These units are for you to to organize yourself. So. If you have a, a geometry unit or a measurement unit, or if you have a unit one, if you want to call it that, whatever you'd like to call it in here, but these units go for all of your classes. So if you call it unit one for math, it's also going to be unit one if you have unit one for reading. So you may want to call it math unit one. Um, I'm a unit it's going to be a part of. And you can actually. Um, add a color here. And this just helps you organize your lesson plans for the future. Um, it doesn't matter what color you choose. Um, let me pick purple. I like purple. And say add. So you can now pick from this unit. And you'll just add units here as you use them. All right, the date is very important. You cannot plan a lesson without putting a date in. This is one of the things that I don't necessarily like about Lesson Planner because you have to post your lesson on a date. You can't just plan it because you're going to use it in the future. If you're planning a lesson like that and you don't know when you're going to when you're going to do it, feel free to post that on a day you know the kids don't have school. So Memorial Day or you can post it on your birthday or if you don't have school that day or in the summer. That's just one way to kind of keep it organized. Um, however, I know I'm going to plan this lesson for tomorrow. Okay, last minute, get my lessons in for tomorrow. All right, right now there's only one lesson plan template, so you don't have to do anything there. In the future, there will be more templates. So standard is the one that you see. Um, this also will be updated this summer. We're going to take out Illinois State Standards because we're not using Illinois State Standards anymore. Um, but we're going to leave a box for other standards. Now will we be able to access the Common Core? Yes, the Common Core is, are still going to be in here. Yeah, they're here already. But we're... It's, it's so... I'm going to show you a little trick to, to get there easier. Um, there are a lot of Common Core standards, and you do have to go through them to get to them. And the reason for that is, is we could, if we wanted to, with each other, target the standards to your class. So that means if you're teaching fourth grade math, the only standards that would show up would be fourth grade math standards. However, if you have students in your class who are at second grade or first grade math, you may have to plan a lesson with first or second grade math standards because that's where your kids are. So if we target the standards to the specific grades to make it a little easier to find, you don't have the ability to pull them in. Okay. In another subject area like science, you're going to be using math standards and you're going to be using reading standards depending on what you're doing. If we target that, you wouldn't be able to get to any of the standards. So that's why the standards are completely open for you to get to. What many teachers have said is the easiest is to always go to select other standards. So to click on right here, select other standards. And this brings you to your grade levels. So if I'm in fourth grade, I'll just click the plus button to open up my standards. And then I have English standards and math standards. So I'm going to click to open my math standards. Now I have my main standards that I can look through to find. The, the content standards are down in grade four. So if I do plus grade four, then I'm going to see operations and algebraic thinking and all these ones. Keep going down, and I think my standard is in here, perimeter, area and perimeter. Okay. If I just click this one, measurement and data, I'm telling whoever's looking at my lesson plan that I'm teaching all of these standards. Okay, that's probably not happening in one day. So make sure that you don't make sure that you get all the way down to the level of what standards you're actually teaching. So I'm apply the area and perimeter formulas for rectangles in real world and mathematical problems. Okay, so that's the standard I've chosen. So you have to kind of get all the way into the standards. And it just takes a little time, but once you get used to it, it's just a couple pluses and you get down there. If you have other standards, you can go back and add those as well. Then you want to click Save at the bottom. Any questions about standards? Does that make sense a little bit?
I know we're still all getting familiar with where in Common Core things are, so it might help to have, you know, like your book of Common Core standards or the Common Core website up rather than looking through here to find them. All right, so save. So now that standard is there. It doesn't show here, but if I want to say see it, I can go view selected standards and then it'll show me right there. So it does have it. It just isn't going to expand it all out because otherwise the page will get really long. Okay. This box here is what we did for Illinois state standards if, if you were going to be using those, but we're going to take that out so no more Illinois state standards. We're doing Common Core. If everyone hasn't heard, next year's ISAT is 100% Common Core. We thought we were still transitioning. It's going to be 100%. So get ready. All right, so objective. Okay, this is where you simply write your objective. However your principal or your curriculum planning team, however you guys phrase that, this is your objective right here. So And you can get as detailed as you want. I don't think that's the greatest objective, but this is just as an example. If you want to add color, you can add color here. You can't add pictures. Um, this is not the same text editor as events have, so you can't add a lot of detail. Um, you can change the color if you, if you want. Um, you can make it green. There's really, I don't think in Lesson Planner, a huge need to change the color. Um, you can add bullet points, which are nice if you want to be listing things. Be careful with copying and pasting into here because the format of, of an old lesson plan that you have, and copying and pasting, some of the editing can get kind of funny. So just be aware of that. The next thing is learning strategies. So if you're using any of these, these are the, the ones that in our district um, we, we like to uh, promote, I guess, Kagan strategies, cooperative learning, or other. You don't have to click a learning strategy, but if you're using one, great. Activities. So activities is what you're doing. This would be sort of your, your teacher script. So first you're going to do this. And I like to, when, I'm, when I plan lessons, I like to lesson plan from the perspective of somebody coming into my classroom and being able to look at my lesson plan and teach everything. Because if, any, if you're ever going to use a lesson again, a year from now, you may not know exactly what you did. So to be as detailed as possible is great. I know it's a little more time consuming, but it makes it so that it's clear to everybody else, including your principal, as well as you two years from now, three years from now. Um, you know. To, oh, and the other thing too is the audience for your activities area, you can decide if the audience is going to be you or if the audience is going to be your students. And that decision you'll want to make um, if you want to post this to your class calendar. So if your students are able to do things on their own, you can say, um, number one, um, you guys have been doing measurements so they know where the measuring tapes are. Um, go as detailed as you want and go through the activity. Or you can write it from the perspective of a teacher. Number one, have students get the measuring tape. Number two, tell students to take out a piece of paper. I always find it's a little easier if you put the directions out there for them because then they can be more self-sufficient. Um, and So we'd, we'd write the rest of the activities there. Materials, this is great, especially for next year when you have your lesson. If you're going to use your smart board at all, if you're going to use iPads or iPods, if you're going to use your laptops, if there are handouts involved, um, or any other material. So other material for me would be measuring tapes. And in the resource area, I would write tapes. Um, I don't know what else we need for measuring the area and perimeter of the playground, but maybe that's the only other resource. So then next year, 
when you have this lesson plan, the night before you can look and say, okay, and have to make sure to get out the measuring tapes. You know that that's another resource. All right, and then finally, assessment. Resources, and you'll see here, there's like a little red asterisk. Those are the things that are required, and those are what the principals decided they want required as part of your lesson. You're not required to put in resources, but you can. Assessment, how are you going to assess students from the lesson? Now, it may be a multiple day lesson, but there should be an assessment of some sort for the standard that you're teaching. So how are you going to assess the students? Um, Maybe I'll put in here a um, project that they're going to do is they're going to create much more detail in a real. But that's the assessment that I would use. Classwork and homework. Classwork. These are also optional. Um, classwork, if you have specific work that the students are going to do in class. So in class, the students would measure. Their homework would be. Okay, obviously more detailed if you're really doing this. If you don't want to put in classwork, that's fine. If you don't want to put in homework, that's fine. If there isn't any, because those are optional. The notes and reflection, this area is for you, which might be, if it rains, we'll have to move this to another day. Or, I only have five measuring tapes, so make sure to get the extras from the, you know, this other teacher. It may be after you're done with the lesson. Uh, this took way too long. We didn't get to finish today. I need to modify this for next year. So it's a place for you to put in your notes and anything you might need. Maybe you don't have time to edit the lesson for next year, but you just want to like write that down. It's kind of like the sticky notes that you stick on your lesson plans and you're like, ah, I need to fix this. Maybe you had some sort of handout and it had some typos on it. That's where you can do that if you don't have a chance to fix anything. Okay. And then attachment. If there is an attachment that the students need or that you need, um, you can attach multiple files to... Um, to this here. It's simply upload from your desktop or add from other files. You just browse and then you know find on your desktop. Um, I'm just gonna find a uh, picture here or a, a PDF file. And then if you want to add you can add more files and say upload. All right, so now you have that document attached, which is great because next year when you find this lesson, you're like, where on my computer? Oh my gosh, my files all got deleted, but your file is saved here. So any files that go with that lesson are here. And you can obviously attach more. All right. If you want them to use a website, that would be great to put in resources. Okay. Um, like, what do they see well, or not see? I'll I never have them. Yeah, I'll show you. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Resources wouldn't be a great area. Uh, it would be actually in activities might be where you would put the website. So click here or maybe in classwork. And classwork, maybe classwork is what you want them to see. And this is the, the maybe this is the area that you word it for the kids. And, and then um, activities is where you word it for the teacher. And then you have the option for what you want to post to your class page. So if you do have a website, um, you can copy and paste the link to that website right in here, and then the students can access that. You can't hyperlink it where you put, like, click here and then make it pretty in here, but you still can post the website in here. All right. You can click Save, but saving um, doesn't schedule it for actually being in your lesson plan calendar. So you want to say Save and Schedule. So I'm going to say Save and Schedule, and this is where you have a lot of options. What day do you want your lesson to be on? So I want it to be on the 21st. But because today's the 20th, everything's defaulting to the 20th. If I want my classwork to show up on my class calendar, so show up as an event for the students to see, I need to change that date 
to the 21st because I want all these to be on the same day. Okay. So it, these dates default to the current day, so you're going to have to change those. If you're not posting those to your class calendar, then you can just leave them. Add to class calendar means that they'll show up as little events for the students to see. You can choose what you'd like to show up. Objective, activities, materials, resources, and assessment, all of those show up under lesson, under the blue lesson bar. Classwork and homework show up as separate classwork and homework bars. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if I post all of them to my class calendar. You don't have to post any. If you'd like to just make those on your own for the kids and have it separate, that's fine. And then you have the option of attaching one file to your lesson. So you might have five different files. You have the option to only attach one, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, there's a way to add that file to your lesson later. So I'm just going to add the one that I have here. Okay. Then share it with your group members. Okay. D100 lesson plan sharing. This box you need to check all the time. If you don't check this box, you're not sharing it with the district, which means nobody can benefit from your awesome lesson planning skills. Um, a lot of principals are looking to see when they, when they look at your lesson plans, are you sharing them? So that's the simple box. If you also have a group set up for lesson plan sharing, you can check that group, and we can talk about groups and sharing later. It gets a little complicated. And then lesson editing options. Um, if you have a group and you want people to be able to edit lessons together, not like Google Docs, it's not simultaneous editing, but if you want people to be able to edit lessons together, you would need to say allow privileged group members. But for now, we're just going to stick to this being the final. And then we'll say finish. All right, so now it says this lesson has been shared. It's got a little red thing there. And then this is going to show you your standard, objective, activities, materials, resources, assessment, classwork, homework. So there's your lesson plan. You can also, um, there's a print view if you want to print this. Um, however, for the sake of saving paper, probably not the best idea. Um, but there is a print view option, just so you know. That's a good one, you know, maybe for the sub you'd want to print the lesson. All right, so now I have this. It tells who created it, when they created it, and when it was last updated. This is the really nice part about Lesson Planner because if I create a lesson and I share it, I'm happy to share it, but I don't want Ed, okay, taking my lesson and turning it into his principal and saying, look at this amazing lesson I created. Okay, he's going to be able to copy my lesson from the shared area, and if he edits it, Ed edits it, that's great. His principal is going to see that as, wow, look how resourceful he is. He went out and found a great lesson plan. Not reinventing the wheel because none of us have time to do that. We all need to learn from each other and work together rather than everybody doing all their own work. So if he copies it, my name will always be attached, but his will be attached as edited. It. So it's principals do not look at that and say, oh, they're not doing their own work. They look at that and say, Wow, look at that. They found a great lesson instead of wasting their time creating it themselves. All right. You can also see here, if you are sharing your lesson, you can see the number of copies that people have made of your lesson. So if you do really good ones, you can start racking up and seeing how many people copy your awesome lesson. All right. So once that's here, you can say close. Okay. In your lesson plan calendar view, which is the My Lessons calendar area, you can now see your unit, your title of your lesson, and then it shows in here sort of a little preview. It's not going to show everything because it doesn't want to get really long, but a preview of your lesson. And it also says shared down at the bottom just to remind you that it's shared. So I have the option to always go in here and edit it. If I want to reschedule it, maybe we had a fire drill, so I couldn't teach it on Tuesday, I can reschedule it for Wednesday. So it's really easy to go and reschedule. Hmm? If you copy it, the one thing about copying it is that in your lessons, if you ever look at your list of lessons, you have like nine copies of the same lesson. Because if you copy it, you're actually just duplicating your lesson, so it's in there. It may not be on your calendar, but it's in your lessons. I can show you later. So reschedule. So now that it's on here, if I actually go to my classes area, this will show you what gets posted. 
So the lesson, there's the name of the lesson, and in the lesson, it posts the standard, the objective, the activities, the materials, and the resources, and the assessment. Mm -hmm. That's for the parents to see? If you want, as well as, depending on the age of your students, you may not need to show your students the standard. You probably want to share with students the objective, no matter how old they are, because they should know what they're supposed to be doing while they're learning it. You may not need to share materials, because you just don't feel the need to. So that's that. those options where we clicked before, we clicked all of them. So you can customize what gets posted to your class calendar. And then the file that you chose gets attached to the lesson. The homework and classwork actually become two separate events so that students know what their classwork is that they need to finish and they know what their homework is that they need to finish. So that's, that's what gets posted. It's up to you. If you don't want to post that to your class calendar, you don't need to. You can just add your own lesson. But it's great to have that on there so that everybody knows what's happening in your class. The kids know what's happening. Even if they're not going in there to specifically look at it, it's on there. So once it's on here, let's say we had that, that fire drill, you don't want to go into here and change the date. Because if you change the date in here, it doesn't change the date in Lesson Planner. So it's not a two-way editing. If you're going to edit this lesson, you want to edit the lesson in Lesson Planner. You can edit it in here. Okay, I can go in here um, and I can add more things to my homework. And if I want to add pictures and other things, but those are not going to stay attached to the lesson. What I know a lot of people like to do is post the lesson um, on here, but then create your own separate homework and classwork or activity. So, you know, I'll, I'll go in here. Um, and I'll add an activity, and maybe it'll be and I'll call it activity. And then I, in here I would type what we're going to do that day. And then for students, they would see the activity and the lesson, but you wouldn't have posted the homework and classwork. You can do those as separate events, or you can have them attached to Lesson Planner. The, the, the nice thing about having them attached with Lesson Planner is that it's kind of like this package that you can easily move around and use from year to year. The, the downside of it is you can't add the pictures and change the fonts and do all of the, the fancy stuff that you can when you just add it separate events. So it's up to you how you'd like to do it. I would see the benefit of having just the lesson and then having separate activities and homework things, which you can always copy yourself from year to year um, through your archive. Does that answer your question about what gets posted to the class calendar? I guess what I'm wondering is how how much are people using? Like, there's such, you know, obviously it's such a variety, but like, what are principals looking to see? On your class calendar, on your class calendar, think of it from, I always like to think of it from a parent's perspective or an absent student's perspective. If they log into eChalk, hmm? Go ahead. If, if they log into eChalk, they log into eChalk, can they do most of what you did in class minus the materials that they don't have with what you posted on there? Do they have enough information? Is that what the goal is? That's what the, that's what the goal is. Because if a parent looks on here, they can see exactly what happened that day. Okay. Now, kindergarten students, it's a little bit different because kindergarten students may not be logging into eChalk and clicking on links and having it really be interactive. But it should at least say, today in kindergarten, you know, we practiced the you know, vowel sounds. We played counting games. Here's the video that we watched to remember it. It should have all that in there so a parent knows exactly what happened in their class that day, or a student who was absent could catch up all, all by themselves. And there's you know varying levels for what your kids can do on their own, what parents are going to help their students do, but the more information we put out there, the more you can say, did you check eChalk? Oh, your student was absent for three days? All of it's on eChalk. So it's really easy. I mean, I know with the middle school students, our kids come back after being absent 
ready to go because they know exactly what happened and they got all the information. Or they come back and maybe they didn't have internet at home. They come back and they were absent and we just say, it's on eChalk. Instead of, oh, let me get you your folder and sit with you for 10 minutes and, and just, you know, go over everything with you. Let them be as independent as they can by providing them the most information. What about the dynamic of a parent son who only speaks Spanish? Is there any, is there any translate on here now? Um, on here, not, but if you are on the main site, like the not logged in site, um, you can you can translate it into Spanish. So a parent can go onto mine and translate it on their own? They can. Um, there's, and I don't know if I'm doing this the right way or not, but I think, yeah, it is a website. So. I'll show you. We'll do this as an example. Emerson. All right. So this is my, this is the teacher that I'm planning with right now. So let's say I clicked on here. Okay. I can take this, copy this event or this website, go to Google Translate, paste that in there and say Spanish. And then now when I go in here, it's in Spanish. as much as it can translate in Spanish. So how can I teach my parents to do that? I can show you. You could teach at Curriculum Night. Um, there's also a way, if you want, what you can do is you can take this, now this link here, this translated link, and you can that and say, today's lesson in Spanish. And you could take that link and do that for them. Okay. So that's, that's one way. I would rather teach them how to do it because then you're not doing the work they're accessing it themselves um, but that's probably the best way to do that all right all right so any questions um, in terms of the the basics where did my hangout go Emerson how are you guys doing I see some thumbs up okay good thank you guys all right so those are um, the the basics of of just planning a lesson. Um, going back to the eShop professional development agenda. So we went over the, the basics. We went over posting to your class page. We'll do rescheduling. Um, so if we want to reschedule a lesson. So go to my lessons and let's say this lesson, I need to move it to Wednesday. If I go to reschedule, I need to change the day I want it to start on. So I just click this box and it goes Wednesday and Wednesday and Wednesday. Now if it's a lesson that you um, that you're doing multiple days in a row, that's when you would copy it if you're going to do the same lesson the next day because you're, it's like taking three days. That would be the copy. Reschedule as if something happened and you have to move the whole lesson. Um, then I'll say finish. So now my lessons move to Wednesday. So it's deleted from the day before. It's deleted from the day before, and if you go to my classes, it moved it to Wednesday. It didn't move the other separate thing that I made, though. I would have to do that on my own. So if you did the homework and you did all the homework from the day before, mm -hmm. would it transfer all that homework? It would tra it's going to have everything that's in that lesson that lessons, planner. Like, yeah. Then you would still have a homework on the other side. You know how some people make a separate or make more homework because like if you click on there you can edit the homework. If I edit this, it does not edit it in your lesson plan. So I have to go back to lesson planner and edit the homework. So what is the why would you use this then? So it's this puts it, it it's not, not a two-way editing system and that's one of the things that is, is in the future. It's just not there yet. So it makes sense that it would be two-way. It's just not there yet. No, what I'm saying is if I had homework, that homework, mm -hmm. on the other one with other homework that wasn't attached to that lesson mm -hmm. with homework stay on the other, on the other yes. day. Yes. 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 Because it's, sep it's a separate event. It's just, so uh, if I were to, do you know what I mean? If, if you make a ho another homework, homework event right. that's like so science it's homework okay. it's just a set it's a separate event all under the yellow bar it's a good question all right so then 
I go back to my lessons so you know how to reschedule it. Rescheduling is also, um, it, you can edit, sorry, if you edit and you then save and schedule, then you can change things too. I find it easier if I'm going to reschedule, just don't change the date, and then I can change these things if I wanted to change those. So there's a couple ways to get to the editing features um, that, that you can do. All right, so then my lessons. So the next thing I want to show you guys how to do is to search for other lessons. So if you go to plans, these are your lesson plans. And it's your lesson plans for the month of May. And if you say show all, it'll have all. You, right now, this has all years, all months, and then all units. Um, you could pick your classes. So there's a way to look at this. So I can look at all my lessons for all my activities for all of time. You probably have a lot more than I do because this is my little fake teacher account. If you want to look at just a unit, just my measurement unit, go. And you just get your measurement unit. So there's a way for you to divide and, and organize your lessons. You can search between dates. You can even search by keyword because you know Type in the word playground, and it'll find anything that has playground in it, which apparently I didn't type correctly. All class activities should find playground. Hmm. That's kind of odd. Um, all right, so there's all your lessons, all your units, all your months. Summary plans. Summary plans is what you are submitting when you turn your lesson plans into um, to your principal. It's called summary plans. You probably never click on it because you don't need to look in there. But if you've turned in lesson plans, this is where you'll see if they're approved or not. Yeah, it'll say that for like for individually lessons. But the summary plans are when you submit a week chunk of lessons for all your classes. Shared lessons. This is where you go searching for other people's lessons. All right. So the first thing to note is the date range. It always picks the current week. So when you search, if you're only searching the current week, unless somebody else is teaching that lesson this week, you're not going to find it. So I always change this date range, and I just go back to, like, the first day of school till today. You can decide to to search a subject, I would caution against this because if you set up your class to be a fourth grade class and elementary school was your subject, if you pick math, you're not going to find it. And some teachers set up their classes with the wrong subjects. So I would leave that just at all subjects. You can then pick grade level. And then you can pick the schools that you want to search. So maybe you just want to search your own school. Maybe you want to search all the elementary schools. You click on sites, and then you can add the other sites. So right now I'm only searching elementary schools because I don't need to search Freedom and Heritage. So I picked fourth grade. And then unit. This is where it gets a little crazy because these are all the units that have been created by all the teachers in the district. Okay. If we get a little more organized in, in how we plan things, we might be able to have a unit on something more specific. Number sense would be a unit. But that's just one person's number sense, or really anybody who, who created that unit. If you, if you do all units, then you can just search all units, and that's probably best to just leave that. The groups, you would want to search all groups. If you don't have a group, you're going to search D100 lesson plan sharing. Okay. So now it found all the lessons, the name of the lesson, who, they, who created it, how many copies were made, the unit. All the lessons that fit fourth grade. Okay. If teachers have done things right, which they have, you can go down and pick math and say find now. And then you'll find all the math units for fourth grade. Okay. And if you notice, that's quite a lot of lessons to pick from. And there's often, if there's more, it'll show down there. There's more than a whole page of it. 
Right? You'll often find multiple copies because people made multiple copies of lessons, so be aware of that. If you created the lesson, you'll have the little editing feature next to it. All right, so let's say I really like Sam Dastis is adding and subtracting whole numbers. And I notice that there's already one copy of it made. Maybe that's because it's a great lesson. Maybe there's five copies of something. You can sort by that. You can sort by teacher. So if you want to sort by who created it, alphabetically by last name. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this adding and subtracting whole numbers. So all I need to do is put a little check mark next to the lesson I want to copy. And then I say, oh, hold on. This is not letting me scroll to the left. There we go. There we go. Copy right here. So any things I've checked, I say copy. Copy lesson. All that's going to do is ask you, where do I want to put it? Well, I want to put it in my math class because it's a math lesson. Then it's going to ask me right away. Do you want to rename it? You've now copied this person's lesson. You are not editing their lesson. You've just copied it, put it in your own planner so that you can edit it yourself. So if I want to change the title of it, that's fine. If I want to put it in a different unit, I can put it in a different unit. I can change the date. Right now, the date that that teacher taught it was 9-21-2012. If I leave that date, it's going to post it on 9-21-2012 for me, which is probably kind of silly. So I'm going to go change that to May 23rd. Then I can go and see which standards were in there. So if I want to view selected standards, I can see, yep, that's the right standard that goes with it. Okay. I can either save or cancel if I didn't make any changes. If I want to change or reword the objective, I can do any editing I want from this lesson now. It's mine to play with. I'm not editing anybody else's. Delete, do whatever you'd like. And then if I had an attachment, then I would say save and schedule. And then I would decide what do I want to post to my class calendar. If there wasn't classwork, it won't give you the classwork option. It doesn't give you the sharing options because the lesson's already shared, so you don't have to do anything with that. I want to post the objective as well, and I want everything to be on the 23rd. Finish. So now I've just copied a lesson into my own lessons. Um, I need to click math. Add in subtracting whole numbers. Okay, so I, it's in my own. And now it's my own lesson, but there's that just secret little thing at the bottom that says Samantha Dace has originally created it. That's about it. I can go back to my classes and I can see that the lesson is there and the homework is there, just like I said. And it's also, if I go to my lessons and my calendar, it's in there too. I I do not believe those are the administrator comments. Those are comments that if you share lessons with each other, you can comment on each other's lessons back and forth. The comments from the administrators are just to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did it get to my email? One time, it, a couple, few times it did. I was like, Okay. The comments were sent to your email. It's, yeah, it, it, it notifies you that a comment was posted, right? It, it was somebody else responding. Oh. To, it was, I wasn't even involved in anything, and I was like, how did I get this? If you were possibly shared in a group on it, in a lesson planning group, uh, no. if you have it, I can, I can help show you how to do that. Okay? So if I filled up my, my lesson planner calendar, uh-oh, hold on. Um, sorry, people asking questions. Yes, okay, how long, uh, do, 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 hold on. Emerson, I got you, hold on, let me look at this. All right. So first question is, is there a quick, easy way to share lessons with my co-teacher? I'd also like to send my lesson as an attachment. Okay, the co-teaching thing is a little complicated. There are two ways that you can share lessons with your co-teacher. Number one, just decide that you're always going to plan the lessons under one of your usernames in eChalk. I'm sure you know each other's eChalk usernames and passwords because you probably know every username and password between the two of you. You're 
principals are very aware that you're planning every lesson together, so therefore both of you don't need to be submitting your lesson plans because they're the same because you're co-teachers. That's one way to do it. That, in my, um, in my uh, experience, I've heard is the easiest. You just log in when you're planning lessons as that same person. Or you could have one teacher in charge of planning the math, one in charge of planning the reading, and then your principal is aware that that's whose lessons are getting submitted by who. The other option is to create a lesson plan sharing group, which your site manager has to create the group, and then there's some tricks to sharing lessons. You cannot edit them at the same time. And that was a question. It's not like Google Docs. You cannot edit them at the same time if you log on at home at the same time. That's something that just does not work with this system. Um, I wish it did. I, um, a great way would be to get on Google Hangouts and have share screen, and then you guys can edit. One person can edit while the other, you know, discusses. Um, that's just a kind of a workaround. There is a way that with the group sharing that you can edit each other's lessons just not simultaneously. There's just a little extra step that you need to do. But in essence, it's kind of silly for you both to submit lessons if they're the same because your principal is going to look at the exact same thing twice. Um, I can, I'm happy to help co-teachers sit down and do that. It's not something that I can, I can kind of go through it here if we have some time. But it's a little, it's a little complex. Okay. Um, in terms of updates to Lesson Planner, um, not anytime super soon. That's not coming up as a lesson. Co-teaching is not something that's extremely common across the country, so therefore it's not something that's built into their lesson plan process. I wish it was. It's just not. Um, the questions that people asked, what were some of the questions that we just asked a couple minutes ago? You guys had asked. About translating, about Google Translate, I think they got that one from earlier. Okay. Um, oh, if you, a quick easy way or to send my lesson as an attachment. If you want to send your lesson as an attachment, so you need to email it to your substitute or download it, the best way to do that is to go to print. Just print. So next, Sorry. did you see that right here? No. The little edit button, okay. print. That opens up a new page. And then you have print options. You can try decide to make the text smaller or larger if you need to. And then if you say file print, then you can open the PDF in preview, or you can oops, sorry. It, this does look different because I have um, mountain lion versus lion, but you have the option in here you change the destination or there's a box down on the left that says save as a PDF. Yeah, so yeah, click that and say save as PDF and then you've just saved your lesson plan as a PDF. Now it doesn't save the attachment, you'd have to print that in it or attach that additionally, but there's a way. Save it to your desktop. Yep, just, just save it to your desktop, um, you know, lesson, whatever and then save it to your desktop. And once it's on your desktop, it's just a PDF file that has all the lesson information in it. All right. Uh, how long should it take us to do our lessons each week? Those of you who are here, elementary teachers, how long does it usually take you guys to plan your, your lessons? I like it because it's just faster to Okay. I don't think it's any different trying to get the wording down. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still going in hunting for your. Okay. Yeah. Um, the teachers here said they like it because you're not formatting. You're just yeah, putting just, things in boxes. Yeah. Do you have an estimate of about how long it takes to plan all your math, science, social studies? It takes me a half an hour to. About half an hour to type it all in. That's with the planning done. Yeah. With the with the planning done, obviously your planning kind of varies based on math, you. But even like if you know ahead of time, like for reading, it's you know you can do a plan period. You know, you're on top of what you're doing. Okay. Maybe next year with the new curriculum, I'll probably be more planned. 
Right. It, so it kind of depends in terms of getting the information in there. It takes about half an hour to kind of type it all in um, if you have it all ready to go. Um, obviously, you can go back and edit them as you go. So if you, you know, get a little bit in, you can go back and edit. Um, all right. And once you have, like, one day done for reading, mm -hmm. and pretty much if it's the same the whole week, then you just copy it. Okay, so if you plan, you know, if your your plans for the week are pretty similar, you can just copy the lesson, and then if you yeah. if you copy like Monday through Friday, then you can actually edit right. Tuesday to have the different story or right. You can edit the mini lesson part or like the the centers area or something like that, and that's what you put in in activities. So there's a way to get the base the sort of the basic yeah. lesson plan. Just copy it each day. Um, and you can just rename it or, or whatever and then change the mini lesson. That's a good idea. And for co teaching, because I co teach, um, did have that issue because we both wanted to be able to plan, but we both can log in. We log in as, mm -hmm. and we'll both log in. We both can type a lesson. She's doing reading, I'm doing math, and then it's typed in. Okay. You know, so, so if co-teachers log in with the same username, you can work on separate lessons at the same time and not have to worry about things happening. So if, you know, you're logged in as John Smith in two places, you can, one can be doing a math lesson, one can be doing another math lesson. They just set be separate lessons. Or reading. Or like reading. reading. Yeah. So depending on how you guys, it depends on how co-teachers work together. Okay. All right, so another question um, a lot of teachers have asked, well, I like to have my lesson plans printed out for the week. If you do a print view on the calendar page, you can actually print this look um, right here. So just like before, and then you'll have your lessons, and it will have all the details printed out for each day, um, and you can print that if, if you like to run off of that. And I know a lot of people will do landscape, so it spreads it out better. Oh. There's a the landscape option if you use the little place to find that. And then you can take off the headers and footers, which just kind of tell you the date and the name and stuff, so it makes it look a little cleaner. Or you can open it as a PDF if you want it, a PDF, save that, and that'll be your lesson plans for the week, too. So those are, those are ways to make it look nice. I know that um, we've talked about, and I'm going to make the change as soon as the school year is over and let everybody know, that a lot of teachers like to have that view um, and like to have a little box at the top that says kind of what's going on that day, so like a notes area. And so I'm going to add that. It's a separate lesson planning template that you have to use. So that above this, you'll have a little thing that says notes, and then you could have notes for each day that you're you're planning with. So that'll be a new um, a new addition. All right, All right I'm going to go back to my groups and double check. All right, submitting lessons for review. We're going to go over that just for those of you who've never done that. So my lesson. So if I planned everything. Um, for the week, and it's all full and I'm done, then I can submit my lesson plans for review. Different principals have different deadlines for when you're going to submit, and they'll communicate that with you guys. But you click at the top, and you say Submit for Review. And then right here, it defaults to be the week of. So if you're submitting, eChalk defaults to send one week at a time. If your principal wants you to send two weeks at a time, then all you would need to do here is change your end date to be two weeks from then. And unfortunately, it doesn't change this, so you'd probably want to change it there. The name is just week of this to this. It seems like that's the simplest thing to leave it as because it's already with your name, um, and it you probably wouldn't want to, to be changing the name and making it all extra complicated for yourselves. All right, and here, generate summary plan by date. And what a summary plan is is just a chunk of lessons together. Um, most principals probably want your lessons by date rather than by unit. If unit could take two weeks, could take a month, could take a year to do a whole unit. So 
you could do by unit, and if you had your whole unit planned, you could send the whole unit done. Um, so there's one way to, to do that. I, I don't think anybody does by unit. I think it's mostly by date. With some of the reading. And, and that's at each school. You guys can decide how that goes. And then here's where you're going to choose which activities you're going to submit. Now, this is one thing co-teachers could use. If one co-teacher is planning all the math and the other is planning all the reading, one of you could just submit the math, one of you could submit the reading, make it easy that way, and then your principal would be aware of what they're looking for. Um, here you can add a comment that might say, you know, we are starting this today, we've never done this before, you know, I, it would be great if you could come to my class on Tuesday because we're doing this really cool activity. This is a great place to add comments um, for your principal. Say next. And then it says, please review your summary plan for accuracy. Click submit to submit it for review or the previous button to make changes. So it's just checking again. Are you sure you're ready to submit your plans to your principal? So double check that everything's in there. You didn't forget a lesson one day. And say submit. If there's no school on like Monday, I don't think principals need you to type in a whole lesson that says no school. But with the notes, you might be able to do that with the notes little thing. And we can show you how to do that. And then you say submit, and it's going to submit these. And I'm logged in at Emerson right now, so Miss Beatrice Lopez is going to get some fake lessons and say okay. Mm -hmm. When the principals log in, they can go in and see who has submitted lesson plans this week, and so they'll see which ones are missing and which ones aren't. If they get used to the whole thing with co-teachers, they'll know that they're not going to get plans from these certain teachers because they're co-teachers, and they'll figure that out. When they see your lessons. They can look in and they can see all the details of your lessons. Um, they'll, uh, they'll first look at it this way, but they can click on here and, and see all the details of your lesson. They won't just see the, the little part. Then they can comment back to you um, and let you know if, if there's something that they see needs changes, if there's something that they really like, they can comment back. I, do, do your principals comment back often or is it more just... Never. Yeah. Right. So sometimes it's just for them. If they don't have a comment, it's often like, okay, you're good to go. There's no need to, you know, add anything. So it just depends on your principal. Okay. So there's how you submit for review. Let me go back to groups here. Um, so I just put in a few tips down here that it's easier to find your standard if you click on the View Other Standards button, which we went over at the beginning. It's just the easiest way to find standards. Um, creating and keeping organized units is going to help you from year to year. I put in the two options right here. These are the two options for co-teachers. Um, I'm happy to help you. It's just a little process to set up. Once we set it up, it's really not complicated at all. Um, but it just takes a little bit to set up. Um, one thing that I've always thought would be helpful is creating a substitute lesson plan. So having a plan for like that day that you, you know, it's like 10 o'clock at night and you're throwing up and you cannot imagine being there the next day. But you also know that your substitute doesn't have the ability to follow the, the plan that you had because they're a substitute and they just can't do your guided reading groups and all this. Um, so if you create a, a lesson that's just for a substitute day that has, you know, review activities or whatever it is um, based on that, plan a lesson, a substitute lesson, and post it on Christmas Day because the kids are never going to look at your lessons on Christmas Day. But you can always go back and when you're throwing up sick, go in there, reschedule, post it tomorrow, post it to your class calendar, and then you have everything ready to go for the sub and all they need to do is log in. So you kind of have like an emergency plan in place. Um, Kind of like you used to have like that folder that had a set of copies right. and the little magazines for the kids to read, you know, and that, that emergency sub plan. You That's could just keep it right. Like, like you said, on a holiday like Christmas. Right. Day. Put on Christmas Day or New Year's Day or, or something like that, that it's just sub plans that are ready to go. Um, if your lesson planner calendar and your class pages don't match up, um, I'm going to show you guys how to do that now because we have time, how to edit that and customize that. And you're probably want to, going to want to do that for next year if you're changing your classes at all. Um, it's just a matter of settings. And once you learn how to do this, feel free to teach others because it's just one of those things that once you look at it once, you're like, oh, well, this makes sense. All right. So I'm going to go into my lessons. 
and I'm going to go into settings, which you probably don't often go to. Okay. Your activities right here, activities are all of the boxes in Lesson Planner. So if I go to my calendar, these are my activities. This is an activity, 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 this is an activity. This is an activity. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six activities. If I go to settings, you can see I have six activities. If I go to edit planning, now you can see your classes and the activities that go with them. Okay, so remember, the boxes in your lesson planner, in that calendar area, those are activities. Your classes are different. So right now, I have fourth grade class. I also have a math class, a reading class, a spelling, and a writing class. If I'm one of those teachers who likes to have a different class for every subject I teach, then there's a way to, to make your lesson planner work that way. If you want to have one class, but you want to have separate boxes for each of your class to plan in, because you don't want to have multiple lessons within each area. And I'll explain that. So for my math class, I could actually have another lesson in here and have it another lesson on the same day. But that might look a little crazy because I, I wouldn't have them in the same order and they're not going to be grouped by my class. So in edit planning, I have it set up so that my fourth grade class Actually, I can plan math, writing, and fourth grade and post to that class. But they're going to be separate boxes in Lesson Planner. So you may already have the separate boxes, but it just depends on where they post to your class calendar. So I guess the best way to explain it is right now I have my spelling class has... Um, one active activity name for spelling. So if I go back to here, my spelling has an activity and it's going to post to my spelling class. But as you can see, I deactivated that class because I don't use it. I'm just using this fourth grade. If I show all of my classes. Um, then it'll show up down here. I inactivated it. But if this was active, that box would post to this class because that activity is associated with my class. Right now, I have multiple activities associated with one class because I just want to run from one class rather than separate subjects. So what you need to do in the My Lessons settings area edit planning, is you have to have multiple activities for the one class you use. So if you're a teacher that wants one class and everything to post to one class, all of your spelling, all of your math, all of your reading, all of your writing, then you would have multiple activities for that class. If you have a separate math class and a separate reading class, then you're going to have one activity for every class. Does that make sense a little bit? I get myself that one. Uh, All right. <laughs> if yours is set up I, great, don't tell me anything else. Right. Then you, you know, <laughs> no, leave it. Because we fixed it. Right. I didn't like him yet. Right. You can leave it be. But if, right. But if you want, let's say you, for your reading, you want to have two, um, for your calendar area, let's say you want to have two reading group boxes because you just want them to be in separate boxes because they're always planned separately because you have two or three or four groups. What you could do is you could add those activities to your reading class. Right? Reading one, reading two, reading three, or whatever you, you, know, you call your reading groups. So in the settings edit planning area is where you would do that. So in your reading area, you would add activities. So maybe I would edit this one, and I'm gonna, I'll call this like reading group I know you guys don't call them that, but reading group one, save. Then I'm going to add an activity, and I'm going to have reading, and say save. So now, if I go to my calendar area, I have reading group one and reading group two. 
so I can plan them separately, but both of them are associated with the reading class, which you can see right there. So they're both going to post to the reading class, which all my students are in. Now, you might not like the order in which these are here. So if you go to Settings, Edit Planning, you can sort your activities. So sorting them is which order they're going to appear in your grid. Okay. The sort number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, that doesn't matter. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. However, in computer terms, they usually use 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 so that it's easier to reorder things because you could put something 